all wonder whether planet Earth has been visited by aliens. Millions of people around the planet have seen them, but very few can see what is happening on our moon. It is, in fact, a perfect place for aliens to use as a base for visiting us, especially because the dark side of the moon cannot be observed by us. Could it be that our secretive governments know about them? Has NASA come into contact with them? The fact is, astronauts from several countries claim to have seen UFOs on or near the moon. Even NASA astronauts have claimed in public that there was and is a government cover-up. So what is the truth? Are there aliens on the moon? Since the dawn of time, there has been speculation about the existence of alien life visiting planet Earth. From ancient folklore to modern scientific research and evidence, the validation of alien visits has been highly debated throughout the years. When considering whether or not aliens are visiting Earth, we must include the religious view. The Bible contains multiple accounts that suggest alien visitation. In Ezekiel 1, 4 through 28, the prophet describes a vision of four living creatures with the likeness of a man. This description could be similar to what many people today view as a stereotypical extraterrestrial. Similarly, Isaiah 6, 1 through 8 speaks of powerful beings known as seraphim that have wings as well as quote feet like fire and a voice like many waters furthermore some believe the star of bethlehem to be a sign that the magi were guided by aliens to jesus in addition to religious research there is a significant amount of scientific evidence that can be used to support the claim of alien visitation. The scientific community has long been studying the possibility of extraterrestrial life. In recent decades, discoveries in astrophysics and astronomy have added to the evidence of alien life. For example, the discovery of planets orbiting other stars such as Kepler-452b, has sparked much discussion about the possibility of extraterrestrial life. In addition, certain government agencies, such as the Central Intelligence Agency, have released documents confirming their knowledge of unidentifiable flying objects in the sky. This could suggest that an extraterrestrial entity is visiting Earth from a distant place. Well, um, I'm Michael Sala. Um, I have a PhD in, in government from the University of Queensland and I've worked for a number of years in different universities. I had full-time uh, positions in the Australian National University in the Department of Political Science and in the American University in the School of International Service and had other appointments in uh, other universities such as the George Washington University and also the uh, University of Queensland. I came up with this area of an undisclosed uh, extraterrestrial presence that is kept from the general public. So that really did help me understand what was going on and what is driving international politics. The question of how many races are visiting us is a really fascinating question. I mean, how can we know for sure exactly how many extraterrestrial races are visiting us or interacting with humanity? I mean, there are different sources um, disclosing some of that information. Uh, I, found, I found the most credible to be whistleblowers, people who have worked in these um, various secret projects who in some way have kind of been given information that gives them an idea of exactly how many races uh, are here. One of those sources is a, uh, a sergeant who worked in the, uh, for 22 years in the Air Force, uh, uh, Clifford Stone, um, and he was involved in these uh, top secret 
projects that involve the retrieval of crashed discs. So what his job was to go out with a number of other people from who were recruited from various military services that they would come together, uh, they would then be told to go to a particular location and they would then have the responsibility of um, sanitizing and retrieving whatever information and whatever physical evidence there is about a crashed extraterrestrial vehicle in different locations in the United States or elsewhere. And in that process he was able to get quite a bit of information on how many extraterrestrial races are visiting us and he, he came up with the figure of 57. There are also several reports and anecdotes from credible sources that suggest the possibility of aliens visiting planet Earth. For example, in 1978, a man named Stephen Michalak reported seeing and being burned by a strange object that had landed near Falcon Lake in Ontario, Canada. The incident was investigated by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, who concluded that the object was an unknown type of flying craft. Similarly, in 1991, six women in Kazakhstan reported being abducted by aliens and taken to a laboratory far away from their homes. The women were later released, with some experiencing symptoms of trauma. These reports and many others like them provide further evidence to suggest the presence of aliens on Earth. After examining both religious and scientific sources, evidence suggests that aliens are indeed visiting planet Earth. This can be seen through biblical accounts, scientific discoveries, and numerous credible reports that support the possibility of extraterrestrial visitation. While there is still much to learn about the nature of these aliens and their intentions, there is undeniable proof that they exist and are visiting our planet. But what about the moon? There is a wealth of evidence that suggests aliens have visited the moon. Perhaps the most compelling evidence is the fact that there are over 100 artificial structures on the moon, which were first discovered by telescope in the 1960s. These structures include what appear to be domes, pyramids, towers, and platforms. They are scattered across the surface of the moon, and some are even located inside craters. There is also evidence that aliens have been visiting the moon for millions of years. For example, there are strange patterns in the distribution of impact craters on the moon. These patterns cannot be explained by natural processes, and they suggest that intelligent beings have been selectively targeting certain areas of the moon with meteorites. In addition, there are strange markings on the surface of the moon that resemble runways or landing strips. These markings are located near some of the artificial structures and they suggest that aliens have been using the moon as a base for their spacecraft. Finally, there is evidence that aliens have tampered with the moon's environment for example, there are strange concentrations of certain elements on the moon that could only be produced by artificial means. There are also strange patterns of radioactivity on the moon that suggest someone has been deliberately manipulating the moon's radiation levels. All of this evidence points to the conclusion 
that aliens have been visiting the moon for millions of years. They have been using the moon as a base for their operations, and they have been tampering with the moon's environment. The issue in truth is that fact that our governments have been covering it all up. It is no secret that the government is capable of keeping secrets. In fact, there are countless secrets that the government knows that the public does not. So, it should come as no surprise that the governments of the world would be capable of keeping the existence of aliens on the moon a secret. There are a number of reasons why the government could choose to cover up the existence of aliens on the moon. First and foremost, they may believe that disclosing the existence of aliens on the moon would cause widespread panic the thought of aliens living on a nearby celestial body would be unsettling for many people. It could also lead to a lot of questions about why we haven't been able to make contact with them. Another reason the government may choose to cover up the existence of aliens on the moon is because of the implications it would have for our current understanding of the universe. If we found out there were aliens living on the moon, it would completely change our understanding of the universe. It would also raise a lot of questions about our place in the universe. The government may believe that it is best to keep this information hidden to avoid destabilizing our understanding of the universe. Finally, the government may simply be protecting the aliens themselves. If the aliens are living on the moon, they are likely doing so in secret. If the government were to disclose their existence, it could put the aliens in danger. The government may believe that it is best to keep the aliens' existence a secret to protect them. There are a number of reasons why the government could choose to cover up the existence of aliens on the moon. Whatever the reason, it is clear that the government is capable of keeping secrets and are doing so. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, the U.S. government agency NASA, in fact, made several public claims that they had been in contact with aliens on the moon. These claims were met with skepticism by the scientific community and were eventually debunked. However, the stories continue to circulate and some believe that NASA is still hiding the truth about their alien encounters. The most famous of these claims was made by astronaut Neil Armstrong, who allegedly said that he had seen two aliens on the surface of the moon during the Apollo 11 mission. Armstrong denied making this statement, and it was later revealed to be a hoax although there are plenty of people who claim that this hoax statement was in fact a cover-up itself. Other claims were made by NASA employees who said they had seen aliens in photos and on video footage of the moon. Despite the cover-ups, the stories of NASA's contact with aliens on the moon continue to circulate. Some believe that the government is hiding the truth about what really happened and that NASA is covering up a major discovery. There are many various rumors, versions, and theories about the original NASA Apollo 11 mission. In fact, there are those who claim that the Americans never in fact landed on the surface of the moon and that all the photos and videos are fake.
Others believe that the Apollo 11 astronauts actually visited the moon, but came into contact with something very strange. Many ufologists, in fact, say that the Americans found evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations on the moon and observed UFOs, but decided not to disclose this information. Hey, Cayman, Pete. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage. NASA officials either denied any information about UFOs on the moon or simply refuse to comment on such statements. But evidence has recently been published that Apollo 11 astronauts had witnessed a mysterious phenomenon while on their trip to the moon. It took seven years to digitize old files, and they are now available. The published data has already been analyzed by many people who learned about a certain object flying over the Apollo 11 spacecraft. So, maybe there really is an alien base on the moon, and people were simply forbidden to research. In the audio files, one can feel the alarm of the astronauts when they talked about a radiant object that had an oblong shape. The speed of the unidentified object was very significant, and the object itself left the orbit of the moon, which can be understood from these records. Why did the Americans hesitate to talk about it? It is worth noting that these records are official and astronauts reported everything they saw to the Houston Center staff, as ufologists had already said, but then these documents were not on the site. If you listen to the fourth audio file, it talks about the approach of an unidentified object to the spaceship, and the astronauts asked for advice on how to behave in that situation. Then it says the object flew off at tremendous speed. Neil Armstrong was one of the three astronauts in the Apollo 11 mission. And after a while, he began to talk about the fact that there may be aliens and alien bases on the moon. Why make such statements if he has already been on the moon? Even after a huge amount of time, it is not clear enough what exactly astronauts managed to see. According to one report, there is a transcript between Aldrin and Armstrong where the two had witnessed extraterrestrial activities on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission. This is what was said. Those are giant things. Now. No, no, this is not an optical illusion. No one's going to believe this. What? 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 What the hell is happening? What's wrong with you? They're here, under the surface. The idea that aliens could be living under the surface of the moon is an interesting one. In fact, aliens could conceivably live under the surface of the moon. The moon has a thin atmosphere and no water, so aliens would have to either be able to survive in those conditions or have some way to sustain themselves. There are a number of possible ways for aliens to live under the surface of the moon, including using lava tubes or other underground features for shelter. Apart from this, what former NASA astronaut Franklin Story Musgrave said about his experience in space would shock anyone. He claimed to have had seen an eight-foot-long snake, white in color, floating through space. It is hard to explain how a snake could reach space, but Musgrave has never denied it. NASA has been exploring space for a long time, and there are chances that they have found a sign of aliens, but are hiding it from the public. 
there are some NASA legends such as Gordon Cooper, Edgar Mitchell, and Story Musgrave who are firm believers of UFOs. It's no secret that some astronauts believe in aliens. In fact, a recent survey found that nearly one in five astronauts believe in intelligent extraterrestrial life. It's not surprising that astronauts would be open to the idea of aliens, given their unique perspective. After all, astronauts are some of the few people who have seen Earth from space, and they know firsthand that our planet is just a small speck in a vast and empty universe. It's not hard to imagine that there could be other life out there, and some astronauts believe that we've already been visited by aliens. NASA conspirators have full assurance that the U.S. Space Agency has been covering the evidence of UFOs since the first Apollo mission. Donna Hare claimed to have worked for NASA contractor Philco Ford in the early 1970s. She had a high security clearance to walk in NASA's photo lab and other departments. During the Disclosure Project press conference, Hare revealed that NASA covered up and eliminated space anomalies such as UFOs from the satellite photos. Hare has received several space program awards. She dedicated most of her time as a technical illustrator to space programs. She created lunar maps, landing slides, and had been working 15 years as a subcontractor for NASA. She claimed to have access to a place known as Building 8 from where she made contacts with high-ranking officials. Once, she walked into a restricted area which was NASA's photo lab. She noticed the lab had photographs of the moon taken from satellites. She was with a friend who pointed at one of the photographs and surprisingly, she saw a round white dot. Here's what she said, quote, I said to him, what is that? Is that a dot on the emulsion? Then he's grinning and he says dots on the emulsion don't leave shadows on the ground. There was a round shadow at the correct angle. I looked at him and I was pretty startled because I'd worked out there several years and never seen anything like this, never heard of anything like this. And I said, is this a UFO? And he's smiling at me and he says, I can't tell you. She knew what he meant, but could not tell. He said that their work was to airbrush them before putting them into the public domain. According to her, NASA had a protocol to alter the satellite images, and workers who were assigned to this program were put in quarantine. She was told by one of the sources that during one of the moon landings, three UFOs had landed. Subsequently, there was a code word, Santa Claus, for these crafts. No one was allowed to talk about these in public. Otherwise, they would face serious consequences after retirement. She remembered that one person from that secret program told her that every astronaut had seen those crafts during their space missions. She had never seen that man again but got his name, which was given to ufologist Dr. Stephen Greer in a hope that he would find him. Former U.S. Air Force Sergeant Carl Wolf, who died in a bike accident in 2018, was another person who shared a similar story. He also had top secret clearance and worked at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. Carl worked as a precision electronics photograph repairer for NASA's Lunar Orbiter Project. One day, he was taken into a lab by another worker, who showed him a photograph of artificial buildings at the lunar base. His death remains a mystery, as many believe that he was killed for exposing top-secret documents. 
and the list of astronauts who have witnessed strange things goes on. Astronaut Jim Irwin from the Apollo 15 mission had filmed video footage that shows an object resembling a flying saucer hovering on the surface of the moon. This object in the video certainly gives the evidence that aliens are present on the dark side of the moon. But there are more than astronauts who have witnessed the unexplained. Sir Frederick William Herschel, the man who discovered the planet Uranus, claimed to spot bright lights traversing over the dark side of the moon in 1787, which by no means were natural. In fact, various astronomers from all different corners of the world have reported the existence of small luminous orbs on the dark side of the moon, which has made it evident that the dark side of the moon has had visitation from aliens. Giant tower-like structures are being found on the moon's far side that have not only amazed astronomers with their giant size, but also because of the fact that these towers seem to have been moving, which can be understood from the trail that they have been leaving behind them. Such moving towers require super intelligent minds to be built. Surely, they cannot be natural. Structures resembling buildings with interconnected pathways have also been found on the far side of the moon which would compel one to think that the aliens have not only visited the moon, but have also been able to build a city of their own on the far side of it. In fact, many ex-naval intelligence officers who had access to top classified documents have been talking about the presence of unidentified and mysterious structures on the surface of the moon for over 50 years now. In a recent interview, former CIA pilot John Lear stunned the world by disclosing appearances, names, and details about the location of millions of humanoid aliens residing on the moon. It may in fact be that the moon itself is not actually natural, but an artificially created satellite for the very purpose of monitoring humanity. There are a number of theories that suggest the moon is artificial, and while there is no definitive proof, there is certainly evidence that warrants further investigation. The most convincing theory is that the moon was created by aliens. Some believe that the moon is a UFO that was crashed into the Earth's orbit, while others believe that the moon is a base that was built by aliens. There is even a theory that the moon is a hologram created by aliens in order to control humanity. There are a number of factors that support the theory that the moon is artificial. Firstly, the moon is very precisely positioned in Earth's orbit, and it is unlikely that this is a coincidence. Secondly, the moon is much too big to be a natural satellite of Earth, and it is also much too bright. Thirdly, the moon's surface is very smooth and it is thought that this could only be achieved artificially. Fourthly, there are strange patterns on the moon's surface that have never been explained. Finally, there have been a number of sightings of UFOs near the moon. Of course, all of this assumes that aliens are actually monitoring humans. Do aliens monitor humans? First, there have been tens of thousands of reports of UFO sightings from around the world. While some of these could be explained away as natural phenomena or hoaxes, the vast majority remain unexplained. Second, there is the fact that many people have reported strange, unexplainable things happening to them. 
These include things like missing time, strange dreams, and unexplainable feelings or sensations. Third, there are a number of scientific theories that suggest that aliens could be monitoring us. For example, some believe that aliens might be using us as a way to study their own evolution. Others believe that aliens might be trying to interfere with our development in some way. Of course, none of this is definitive proof that aliens do indeed monitor humans. However, it is food for thought. It's highly likely that aliens are out there and that they are keeping an eye on us. The question is, why would they monitor us and not contact us openly? If aliens in fact created humanity in the first place, then that would be one explanation as to why they monitor us. The evidence is overwhelming that aliens created humanity. The first clue is the fact that we look nothing like any other animal on Earth. In fact, we look more like aliens than we do animals. This is because we were created in their image. The second clue is that we have technology that is far beyond anything that could have been created by humans. How did we go so rapidly from being primitive cavemen to creating computers, satellites, and space shuttles? The only explanation is that aliens gave us this technology. The third clue is that many of our religions teach us that aliens created us. This is not a coincidence. Religion is a way for aliens to control us. They created us, so they know what will make us happy and what will make us obey them. There are many theories about the origins of religion, but one that is often overlooked is the possibility that aliens created religion. There are a number of reasons to believe that aliens might be responsible for religious beliefs and practices. One reason is that many religious texts include descriptions of beings that sound like aliens. For example, the Bible describes angels as beings with wings who fly and carry messages from God. This description sounds a lot like what we would expect aliens to look like. Another reason is that many religious practices, such as prayer and meditation, seem to be designed to contact aliens. These practices are often done in private, which would make sense if they were meant to contact beings from another world. Finally, there are a number of reports of people who have had contact with aliens and claim that they were given religious messages. These people have no reason to lie, and their stories are often very convincing. In fact, there are many theories about the existence of aliens and whether or not they have visited our planet. Some people believe that aliens have been visiting us for centuries and that they have even played a role in human history. One theory is that Jesus Christ was actually an alien. There are a few pieces of evidence that suggest that Jesus may have been an alien. First of all, there are many accounts of Jesus performing miracles, such as healing the sick and walking on water. These miracles would be impossible for a human to perform, but they could easily be explained if Jesus was an alien with supernatural powers. Another piece of evidence is the fact that Jesus' body was never found after his crucifixion. Some people believe that aliens took Jesus' body away after he died, which would explain why it was never found. 
Lastly, many people believe that Jesus' appearance was not human-like. For example, some people say that Jesus had long hair and a beard, which was not typical of Jewish men at the time. Also, there are accounts of Jesus' skin glowing and his eyes being very bright. These characteristics could be explained if Jesus was not human. And what about other religious originators, such as Buddha? First of all, Buddha was born into a wealthy family. His father was a king, and his mother was a princess. He had everything a person could want. But instead of living a life of luxury, Buddha chose to live a life of poverty. He gave up all his material possessions and became a monk. Why would he do this? It doesn't make any human sense. But it does if you think about it from an alien perspective. Think about it. If you were an alien and you landed on our planet, the first thing you would want to do is learn about our cultures and customs. And what better way to do that than to live among us? That's exactly what Buddha did. He lived among us, learned about our ways, and taught us about his own. He was also known for his miraculous powers. He could levitate, cure the sick, and even walk on water like Jesus. How could a human being do these things? The only explanation is that he wasn't human. He was an alien. So the next time you see a statue of Buddha, remember that he was an alien and he came to our planet to help us learn about our own humanity. There is also the theory which suggests that Krishna, an important figure in Hinduism, was actually an alien. There are several pieces of evidence that support this theory. First, Krishna is often depicted with blue skin, which could be an indication that he was not from Earth. Second, he possesses supernatural powers that are beyond the abilities of humans. He can defeat enemies with his mind, fly through the air, and change his appearance at will. Third, Krishna is said to have come from another planet called Devarka. This is significant because it's believed that aliens often come from other planets or dimensions. Fourth, Krishna is described as being, quote, not of this world. This could mean that he was an alien who didn't belong on Earth. Fifth, Krishna is said to have had a close relationship with cows. Cows are considered sacred in Hinduism, and they're also seen as a symbol of alien life. It's believed that aliens often take on the form of animals to interact with humans. There are many other theories about Krishna's true identity, but the evidence suggests that he was an alien. In fact, as far back as we care to go, the gods were aliens. The ancient Egyptians worshipped a pantheon of gods and goddesses who they believed were responsible for the natural world and human affairs. Some of these deities were said to have come from the sky and it's not hard to see why people might think that the Egyptian gods were aliens. For one thing, the gods were often depicted as having animal heads, which would certainly be bizarre to us. They were also sometimes shown with wings, which could be interpreted as meaning that they could fly. And in many ancient cultures, Aliens were thought to be responsible for things like crop circles and other unexplained phenomena. In fact, the Egyptian gods were aliens who came to Earth in order to help the ancient Egyptians in their time of need. They were able to help the Egyptians with their advanced technology and knowledge of the universe. The Egyptians worshipped the gods and built temples in their honor. 
the gods are also believed to be responsible for giving the Egyptians their writing and hieroglyphics. But what about the moon and its relationship to aliens and religion? The fact that lunar gods were aliens is a theory that has been around for centuries. The theory goes that the moon is actually a spacecraft that is piloted by beings from another planet. These beings are said to be responsible for the phases of the moon, as well as the tides and other phenomena on Earth. It has been speculated that the moon may be a hollowed out planet or a captured asteroid. It would relate that if the moon was a base for aliens, then the gods we associate with the moon would also be aliens. One of the earliest was the Egyptian god Thoth. There is a great deal of evidence to suggest that the Egyptian god Thoth was an alien. First and foremost, Thoth is often depicted as having an elongated head which is a common characteristic of aliens in popular culture and from numerous eyewitness accounts. Additionally, Thoth is said to have knowledge of all things, which is another common trait of aliens. Finally, Thoth is often associated with the moon, and aliens are of course associated with space. Diana, the Roman goddess of the hunt, was also most likely an alien. The main evidence for this claim comes from the fact that she was able to change her shape at will, something that is not possible for humans. Diana was also said to be able to fly, another ability that is not possible for humans and common to ancient aliens. Other evidence that Diana was an alien includes the fact that she was often seen in the company of animals, which were said to be her loyal servants. This is also a common trait amongst modern alien sightings. Diana was also said to be able to communicate with plants and trees. This is another ability that is not possible for humans. Hecate was an ancient Greek moon goddess associated with magic, witchcraft, ghosts, and crossroads. She was known as a powerful sorceress and was sometimes depicted as having three heads or three bodies. There is evidence to suggest that Hecate was an alien goddess. One theory is that she was a member of the Pleiades a group of seven stars in the constellation Taurus. The Pleiades were often associated with witchcraft and magic, all traits no human has. Hecate's connection to the moon, ghosts, and crossroads also support the idea that she was an otherworldly being. Crossroads were thought to be places where the veil between this world and the next was thin and Hecate was often invoked at these locations. There are many ancient Greek goddesses, but Phoebe is one of the most intriguing. She was said to be a beautiful woman with long flowing hair. She was also said to have the ability to see the future. But there are some who believe that Phoebe was not a goddess at all, but an alien. The first piece of evidence that Phoebe was an alien is her name. Phoebe is not a Greek name. In fact, it's not even a human name. It's the name of a moon of Saturn. So why would an ancient Greek goddess have the name of a moon? It's possible that Phoebe was named after the moon because she came from there. The second piece of evidence is her ability to see the future. This is a power that is not typically associated with Greek goddesses. 
but it is a power that is often associated with aliens. So it's possible that Phoebe's ability to see the future was actually a result of her being an alien. The third piece of evidence is her association with the stars. Greek goddesses are typically associated with the sun and the moon. But Phoebe was said to be associated with the stars. This is another indicator that she may have been an alien and come from the stars. Of course, there is a popular concept of the one God we have today. In order to prove that God was an alien, we would need to have a clear definition of what God is. For the sake of this argument, let's say that God is an all-powerful, all-knowing being who created the universe. There are a few pieces of evidence that could be used to support the claim that God was an alien. First, if God is all-powerful and all-knowing, it's unlikely that he's human. Second, the Bible contains numerous references to God coming down from the sky or appearing in a burning bush. These could be interpreted as God literally coming from another world. In fact, our modern concept of God comes from the Hebrew Yahweh. Yahweh was most likely an alien, and there are many proofs to support this claim. First and foremost, the Bible tells us that Yahweh was not born on earth, but was instead brought down from heaven. This is significant because it means that Yahweh was not subject to the laws of nature that govern earthly beings. Yahweh was also not bound by the limitations of the human body and was able to perform miracles that would be impossible for a human. Another proof that Yahweh was an alien is the fact that he is described as being like a man. This is significant because it means that Yahweh was not a human being, but was something else entirely. Finally, the fact that Yahweh is described as being invisible is another strong piece of evidence that he was not human. This is because humans are not invisible, and the only way that Yahweh could be described as such is if he was not of this world, and indeed had powers to evade our sight. In essence, the gods and goddesses of the past all have the powers of what we today call aliens. They watch us from the moon, and they were the originators of religion. Even ancient man believed this to be the case. There is compelling evidence that ancient man believed aliens lived on the moon or came down from the skies. This belief is reflected in ancient art, mythology, and even religious texts. The first evidence comes from ancient art, depictions of flying saucers and other strange objects in the sky are found in cave paintings all over the world. This suggests that ancient man was aware of something strange in the sky and that they believed these objects were operated by aliens. Mythology is another source of evidence Many ancient cultures have stories of gods or other beings coming down from the sky in strange vessels. This suggests that ancient man believed that aliens were visiting them from other worlds. Finally, there are religious texts that mention aliens. The Bible, for example, describes angels as beings who come down from heaven in flame chariots. This is clearly a reference to aliens, and it shows that ancient man believed that aliens were real. 
In conclusion, there is strong evidence that ancient man believed in aliens. It is in fact a long-standing theory that aliens are watching us from the moon. For starters, the moon is an ideal vantage point for aliens to study Earth. It's close enough to get a clear view of our planet, but far enough away that we can't spot them. Additionally, the moon is incredibly dark and dusty, making it the perfect place for aliens to hide their spacecraft. There have also been a number of strange phenomena reported on the moon that could be evidence of alien activity. For example, in the 1970s, astronauts reported seeing strange lights and objects on the moon's surface. And in 2012, a Chinese rover found a mysterious glassy substance on the moon that scientists still can't explain. There is no statistical way of denying that our planet has been visited by extraterrestrial beings. The millions of eyewitness accounts from ordinary people, astronauts, fighter pilots and more is overwhelming. There is just too much evidence to ignore. But where do they come from? Do they, as many believe, watch us from the moon? There are several reasons why aliens would choose to observe us from the moon. First of all, it's the closest body to Earth. It would be much easier for them to get to the moon than it would be to come all the way to our planet. Another reason, as we have seen, is that the moon is a great place to hide. They could easily build a base on the dark side of the moon, and we would never know it was there. They would have a perfect view of us, and we would have no idea they were watching. There are also strange things happening on the moon that could be evidence of alien activity. For example, there are strange lights and structures on the surface that have been captured by NASA satellites. Some people believe that aliens are responsible for the moon's strange behavior. They believe that aliens are using the moon as a giant telescope, pointing it at our planet so they can study us. The problem for us is the fact that governments all over the world cover up their own knowledge of this. There are many conspiracy theories about the government's involvement with aliens, and as we know, one of the most popular is that they are covering up aliens on the moon. There are a few pieces of evidence that seem to support this theory. First, there are the strange photos that were taken by the Apollo astronauts while they were on the moon. In some of these photos, there are what appear to be aliens or strange creatures. Second, there are the strange objects that have been found on the moon. These objects, known as moon rocks, are very different from the rocks on Earth. They have strange properties that scientists have not been able to explain. Third, there is the fact that the government has never released all of the footage from the Apollo missions. There are many theories about why this is, but the blatant fact is that they are hiding something. Fourth, there are the eyewitness accounts from people who claim to have seen aliens on the moon. In 2007, Italian freelance journalist Luca Scantamberlo took a written interview with William Rutledge, who claims to be a member of the secret Apollo 20 mission. According to him, he was an employee of Bell Laboratories and served in the U.S. Air Force. Rutledge attracted public attention by starting to distribute photographs and videos of the Apollo 20 mission online in 2007, which captured the same spaceship and its pilots. He claimed that during the Apollo 15 mission to the moon, an unidentified man-made object was discovered and photographed on its surface. During missions 16 and 17, several more photographs were taken 
and reconnaissance of the terrain from orbit was carried out. The task of missions 18 and 19 is not really clear. Rutledge only says that during these missions, a number of problems occurred, as a result of which research data was lost. It was originally planned to land next to an alien ship and study it using rovers. In 1976, the Apollo 20 mission was launched, which included William Rutledge, Olsky Leonov, and Leona Snyder. They managed to land by the ship, get inside, and inspect the interior of the ship and the bodies of the pilots. One of the sources said that they not only examined the bodies, but also took the head of one of the bodies with them. The dimensions of the ship were 3,370 by 510 meters, and the age is estimated at 1.5 million years. Inside, there were signs of biological life, remnants of vegetation in the engine compartment of the ship, stones of a triangular shape that exude a yellow liquid that has some medical properties, the remains of small bodies that lived in a network of glass pipes piercing the whole ship. They found a humanoid, female with genitals, hair and six fingers. She was a pilot, and there was an aerobatics device connected to her fingers and eyes. The body had no clothes, and they had to cut two cables connected to the nose without nostrils. Leonov detached the device from the eyes. Blood clots or biofluids burst and froze in the mouth, nose, eyes, and parts of the body. Some parts of the body were in unusually good condition. Hair and skin were protected by a thin transparent layer of protection. The condition seemed neither dead nor alive. The booth was full of inscriptions and formed from long, hollow hexagonal tubes. This kind of tale emerging from people connected to space agencies is not new or alone. There are dozens of them. Something has been discovered on the moon, and as we have seen, it has been known about for thousands of years. Today, instead of believing these beings to be deities, we see them as biological entities from another planet or planets. The one remaining consistency is that we, the ordinary people, are kept in the dark. Whether it is control from a religious leader or government body, the fact remains, we are not allowed to know the truth. Overall, there is a lot of evidence to suggest that the government is hiding something about aliens on the moon and elsewhere. We are not alone in the universe. There are other intelligent beings out there. And one day soon, as we begin to colonize the moon, we ordinary people may in fact be allowed to meet them.